Hello dear YouTuber friends and I do hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video, your eyes are not deceiving you. I'm flying Microsoft Flight Sim on the Steam Deck OLED. So in this video I'm going to give you the performance overview of how Microsoft Flight Sim performs on the Steam Deck OLED. Show you some of my settings that I've got set on the Steam Deck. Also in this video... With the help of a cheap USB hub, which I've got plugged in at the back there. I didn't know this would happen, but you can use a surprising amount of different flight controllers with the Steam Deck. As you can see here, I've got the Velocity One flight stick plugged in. And these work absolutely fine. It was a big surprise to me. I'll be talking about that in this video. At the end of the video, I'll come back give you my thoughts and recommendations on whether you should buy a Steam Deck OLED to fly Microsoft Flight Sim. Let's not dilly-dally. Let's get on with this video. Okay, so to start with, I'm flying the Cessna 182 aircraft. I'm flying over the south of the UK, near London. As you can see, I've got the frames counter, some information on top of the OLED there. You can put this on on the overlay. It's the frames I'm looking at there. Now, it's hovering around that 30 frames per second. It does dip down every now and again. You've got to expect that with Microsoft Flight Sim on the Steam Deck. But typically, it will stay around that 30 frames. So I'm just using my Velocity 1 flight stick just to move the camera view around. And typically, it feels smooth, which is important when you're playing. So you can get actually some good performance, as long as you get roughly that 30 frames per second. You want to ideally get 30 to 40 to, for a better performance. But like all games on that I've run on the Steam Deck OLED, it all feels nice and smooth. It kind of compensates for any kind of frame dips, as long as it doesn't dip down to the teens you're going to find that you've got quite a smooth performance. And it does actually fly quite well, quite surprisingly. Let's go to the settings. Oops, I've just jumped inside the cockpit. But never mind, as you can see in the cockpit there, we seem to be well over the 30 frames, or we're over the 30 frames pretty consistently, with no issues at all. And that was even flying over a busy area like London. Now, can I press the right button to get to the settings? I have done there. So what I'll do is go to general options. And typically here, I've got settings. I've got it on full screen, uh, anti-aliasing TAA, which is pretty much the best one to run on Flight Sim. And pretty much a lot of medium settings. I'll say I've got it on medium preset four times uh, filtering there and the rest of them pretty much medium, medium settings I'm just flying with few clouds so there you go it's just a quick old because there's not many videos about Microsoft Flight Sim running on the Steam Deck I might actually show you this with the help of that USB hub there it does have video out so I can put it out to my monitor and show you this in full screen mode as well I think it would be a crime not to but there you go. So typically, those are my settings. And it performs quite nicely. Now, when I go back, sometimes the engine will cut out for whatever reason. Yep, the engine's cut out. So what I'm going to do here, I've got to see if I've got a double bind in there. I don't believe I have. I checked before, but something's going on. When I go to settings, it will cut out. But I'll keep you in this view just to show you the kind of performance you get with it. So we'll let this sim load. So it's showing you on the internal hard drive as well there. I've got it uh, installed on the internal hard drive, which is taking up, I think this is the 500 gigabyte model I've got. Uh, it's a 480 pound Steam Deck OLED, just for reference. 
Yeah, I believe this is a 500 gigabyte model. So I've got Flight Sim installed. It's taking up a lot of the space. So possibly after I've recorded this video, I'll come to that in my conclusion. I'll wait for my conclusion before I mention that. I've also got a mouse attached just to make things easier for myself. Now I'll put my throttle up to full. And it's just to give you the general performance. So I am using, I'll come to this in a moment. I've got my hand on the flight stick just to control things. So a little bit of rudder control in there as well. Hope the camera works not too bad. By the way, I'm using a new headphone. You probably hear the audio's different. Feedback on that, please. I'm still messing around and experimenting with the settings of my new microphone. And I'm just trying to get everything right. But feedback on that is the audio, my voice, okay? Uh, yeah, it's a Logitech Pro X headphones. I treated myself just to try and improve my audio somewhat in my videos. So there we go. As you can see, up in the air, going towards London. In the cockpit there, 30 frames. 34, 33. So it's hovering around that 30 frames. So with those settings on in a busy area, I've got, as you can see, other people flying around me, a few cloud settings as well, some so, some clouds in the sky. Have a look around. It's all quite a smooth experience. So I'm going to stick my autopilot on. It'll just keep me in that current configuration. I've got no altitude set. So there you go. Can we jump outside just to see that? Have I pressed the right button? I have indeed. So flying towards London. Now, externally, it might dip now and again, but it's staying above that 30 frames. And as you can see, apart from the actual loading issues around London, it's not too far from a PC. I believe this is running in, in what is it, 800p or something like that. So it's not 1080p on the Steam Deck. But the Steam Deck has a magical way of compensating for your frames and for your gaming experience. Playing some of the games on the Steam Deck has been an incredible experience. I bought it just to see how Microsoft Flight Sim would run in it. And I was intrigued to see if controllers work and they do. I'll come to that in a moment. But I also bought it because I was intrigued by the console nature of this and when you're playing games you get some surprising performance and with the haptic feedback of the steam deck it's just a magical experience anyway i'll come on to that later so there you go that's the performance it seems to be performing quite well doesn't it well let me show you now let me take you to the part of the video where i'll talk about the surprising uh, ways controllers, flight controllers, work fine on the Steam Deck OLED. So let's talk about the different controllers that you can use with the Steam Deck OLED. As you can see, I'm in control settings, and my Velocity 1 flight stick, which is next to me, which is connected through that USB. I got this from Amazon, by the way. If you've got a Steam Deck, you want a cheap uh, USB hub that even has uh, video output out as well on this and a few extras. I'll put my links for this down below in the description. Nice and cheap, and it works fine. But via that, and I've got a mouse attached as well, all the controllers actually picked up on my flight stick and work fine. There you go. There's my ailerons and elevators. And I've got other controls in there. All the autopilot, so all the buttons are working. Here you go. There's something from my last video, which I'll link down below in the description. Sometimes these LED lights don't work on this flight stick. It did last time I plugged it into the Steam Deck. This time they're not... Not really too fussed about that nowadays with the flight stick, whether these work or not. It's nice when they do, but I'm more concerned about the functionality of the flight stick itself, and it's working fine. But everything works, including trimming. Now, here's a surprise. I actually plugged in my uh, XPC yoke, Honeycomb XPC yoke, and Logitech Throttle Quadrant. And Flight Sim, via the cloud save data, or whatever it's called, 
picked them up fine. And I was flying on my Steam Deck with my XPC Yolk and my Logitech Throttle Quadrant. Even tried the Velocity One Yolk and that picked up and worked well as intended as well. Maybe we shouldn't be surprised the Steam Deck is PC architecture. So maybe it's not a surprise that controllers like this do work. It was to me. I expected the Steam Deck to pick them up. I didn't expect them all to work fine in Microsoft Flight Sim. I've not tried every Haltas and every flight stick I own. I own quite a few, but it's a fair bet that they will all work on this. That is quite surprising, but it does raise a question. I've got my Steam Deck sort of uh, upright there. It's just about holding against that wall. Is this the way you want to fly and play your Steam Deck? I mean, you want to be grabbing hold of that and using the built-in controllers. Uh, they've got a strange uh, control scheme set up for Microsoft Flight Sim on the actual Steam Deck controllers. You can play around with them and set them up the way you want. Uh, but is this the way you want? You actually want to play or fly Microsoft Flight Sim if you're going to use an external controller? controller. I don't know about that. Maybe that's a good segue for my conclusion and recommendations. So should you buy a Steam Deck OLED to play or to fly Microsoft Flight Simulator? Now, I'm going to say mainly no to this one. I mean, look, this cost me, if you're going to buy a Steam Deck OLED new now, uh, I think the lower model is £480. That's just going to be over $500, €500. Euros, around that mark. Now, keep in mind, you know, you can buy an Xbox Series X for that price. Use a load of different controllers on that from Velocity, uh, from Turtle Beach controllers, Velocity 1 flight stick or Yoke or something like the Honeycomb setup, the XPC Yoke, or even Thrustmaster. You've got a whole range of different controllers that you can use on Xbox currently, and you're going to get better performance from the Xbox Series X. That's the way I would go if you're looking at buying a system for around the same price as the Steam Deck OLED to fly Microsoft Flight Sim. You're just going to get a better experience from the Series X. Of course, there's a maybe attached to this as well. If you already own the Steam Deck OLED and you don't want to buy a gaming PC or an Xbox console, then why not? And you don't get quite... I was going to show you a video out on this, actually attach the Steam Deck OLED to my monitor. I think that's going to defeat the purpose somewhat. If you're buying a Steam Deck, you're going to want to play this mainly in a handheld mode. And, you know, because of the small screen, I mean, you can get some kind of experience, flight experience from this. Controls can be difficult, but if you come down, set your controls right. I'm just using the Velocity 1 flight stick for this. No, you can do all your autopilot shenanigans. So it's a maybe if you're looking at buying the Steam Deck OLED for different reasons, for the gaming reasons, or for the emulation reasons, look out on my second channel, which I'll link down below in the description. I want to do a video on the emulation capabilities of this. They are absolutely fantastic on the Steam Deck. So yeah, it is a maybe, and with the different flight controllers, I mean, I've only attached a few different flight controllers so far, but with the amount of flight controllers that are available for PC Microsoft Flight Sim, and they'll probably all work on this, you can knock yourself out there as well. But does it take away from the handheld format? Do you want all these wires attached when you... Do you, do you want to play Flight Simulator in this mode if you're going to attach the controller or Yoko? Goodness knows what. I don't know. I mean, you can let me know your own thoughts on that. But do let me know your thoughts on this video. It's good to get one out with the... Um, uh, on the Steam Deck OLED and Microsoft Flight Sim. Don't know if I've come across another video about this yet, so it's good to get one out. Let me know your thoughts down below. Give the video a like if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe for more, and I'll see you soon.